Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned into MB12 Weekend, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight, calls for NHI legislation before its implementation. A mortgage foreclosure bill aimed at saving thousands of Bahamians from losing their homes. The first cochlear transplant surgery in the Bahamas, a success. A Bahamian artist takes the Caribbean slide to Miss World. Plus, as always, we count down the top quotes in news this week. I'm Paige McCartney. We've got those stories and more straight ahead on MB12 Weekend. Welcome once again to MB12. With only two weeks left until the proposed start of national health insurance, the Christie administration has yet to present legislation that will govern the new health care regime. This has one prominent surgeon accusing the Christie administration of mishandling the massive health care scheme. Jasmine Brown has more. With the rollout just around the corner, Sands says it's clear that NHI will get off to a very bad start. Dr. Sands suggested that the government is nowhere near where it should be in its quest to facilitate a proper January 1, 2016 rollout of its proposed national health insurance scheme. In fact, Sands says if the government was serious about getting it right, they would have tabled legislation to support NHI during the final sittings of the House this year. Here we are two weeks before the implementation, at least of registration, and there is no legislation for NHI. Dr. Sands further argued that the absence of the legislation shows that the government is rushing to roll out its universal health care plan. The government um, has a self-imposed deadline which is primarily predicated on the politics and the optics of NHI. The government plans to introduce the first phase of NHI, which is registration for the program, on January 1st. The program will be phased in over a period of five years. On Wednesday, it was announced that the National Insurance Board's new smart card will be used as the identification card for NHI, and an enhanced registration will begin on January 18th. National Insurance Board Director Rowena Bethel announced during a press conference that NIB will facilitate the registration coverage for NHI. Still, San says from where he sits, not enough is being done. What they ought to be doing is doing the enabling legislation so that it is legal to capture this very sensitive information. He adds that if the government is serious about implementing the health scheme, it would put an end to the confusion by being more upfront with the facts. And I would urge the government to stop and not proceed with something that is illegal because, as I've said before, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. What you have the ability to do is go to the House of Assembly to present a bill, debate it, pass it, and then pass it in the Senate. Now, after that, go ahead and start registering people for this plan. Meantime, Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Nalan Brennan has said the first year of primary care services under NHI, scheduled to begin in April, will cost around $100 million. The Bahamas Insurance Association put the annual cost at around $1 billion. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Brown. In other news tonight, police have two men in custody in connection with the country's latest murder. Reports are that around 9 last night, a man was standing in the front of a home on John Chipman Street when a man armed with a handgun approached and shot him before running off. The man was rushed to hospital but died a short time later. Investigations are ongoing. Police are also searching for the person responsible for a shooting early this morning off Blue Hill Road. They say shortly after 5.30, a man walking along Weir Street was shot by an unidentified gunman. The victim is in stable condition in hospital. And a weekend of rampant armed robberies continued as police report several more incidents. In the first incident, police say shortly after 10.30 Friday night, a man and a woman were walking along West Bay Street when two men armed with handguns approached and robbed them of a handbag, a watch and cash, and then ran off. 
Then shortly after 8 a.m. Saturday, a man armed with a handgun robbed a service station on the corner of East Street and Balfour Avenue of an undetermined amount of cash before fleeing in a silver Honda. Later that night, police say a group attending a house party on Soldier Road was robbed at around 11 p.m. when an armed gunman stormed in and robbed two women of handbags before running away. Then police say just minutes later, two men standing near a parked car on East Bay Street were robbed of cash, jewelry and cell phones by two gunmen. And in the final reported incident, police say just after 6.30 this morning, a woman was walking north along Blue Hill Road when a man armed with a handgun robbed her of cash and then ran away. Police are warning residents to remain vigilant this holiday season. Well, when the House of Assembly reconvenes next month, United Democratic Party leader Greg Moss is expecting the first reading of a bill he drafted to protect homeowners against foreclosure. He said the mortgage foreclosure bill, as it has been dubbed, is essential in protecting the Bahamian dream of home ownership. Um, that is an important bill because that bill touches not only a, a vast number of Bahamians, but it touches the dream of building a modern Bahamas. It touches this idea that the middle class um, would have been supported and equipped to, to amass wealth in their homes and to educate their children and have something to pass on to the next generation. And that has been successively eroded over both governments over approximately the last six or seven years. It was a campaign issue that I, I brought forward, um, that I was successful in getting into the platform of the PLP and that no one has touched really in a significant way since then. Moss called the bill which seeks to make it law that banks get court approval before selling a homeowner's property a fundamental issue for his party. Now if some, if a bank has your house and they want to sell it they simply sell it and they only go to court if you refuse to get out of the house that they need in order for possession to get you out. But what the law should be and what the law is in most other countries is that no bank should be allowed to sell a home without the leave of the court, without the permission of the court. And when you go to the court, the court will have certain jurisdictions to extend your mortgage period, to lower your monthly payment, to do a number of other things to make the mortgage um, more fair. And that is what we're bringing into the law of the Bahamas, just to modernize it in, in, in conformity, for instance, with a law that was passed in England from 1970. This will be the first bill presented to Parliament by Moss's newly formed United Democratic Party. He calls it a pity that members of the opposition don't contribute more to the legislative agenda. What saddens me is they literally take this idea of opposition literally, that whatever the government says they must oppose. And so uh, the sad fact is that oppositions, both parties when in opposition, tend to see their role as just to oppose whatever the governing party says, rather than to constructively engage parliament and to promote bills. The same can be said of the Senate. The Senate has an equal right. To, to initiate bills, except for money bills. And yet still we see this, this, this perversion of, of the democracy where these things are not happening. Ma said this will be the first of several bills his party intends to table in Parliament. The others, he said, will address crime, education, and the economy. Well, three years ago, life changed dramatically for 33-year-old Wesley Paul when suddenly he went deaf. He was sitting in the movies one night and heard a sound he describes as a firecrackers and then suddenly thrusts into the world of silence. This changed his life drastically. He lost his job and could no longer communicate verbally or socialize with family and friends. He found himself retreating more into this world of silence to a point where he felt a profound sense of hopelessness and felt at times there was no reason to live. Although Paul was fitted with a hearing aid, he still struggled to communicate. Losing hope at ever regaining the life he once enjoyed, Wesley had what would turn out to be a life-changing meeting with a local audiologist, Dr. Kim Scriven. She had recently partnered with the Medel company out of Austria, one of the world's leading manufacturers of implantable hearing devices, to open one of their hair life clinics at the Bahamas Medical Center, offering several types of hearing implant surgeries, including cochlear implantation at Doctors Hospital. Wesley was an ideal candidate and on July 4th this year underwent the first cochlear implant surgery to be performed in the Bahamas at Doctors Hospital. His surgery was deemed a success. He had very good post-linguistic skills and he was highly motivated and had that drive and the determination to regain some of the normalcy and also to improve the quality of his life. And the fact that he was just recently deafened made him a really good candidate. I was touched by Paul's story when I met him in November. 
He presented with severe to profound hearing loss, but his story touched me. Uh, his story of hopelessness and wanting to give up on life. And I felt that I needed to help him. It, it was my calling, it was my duty to help him. The inaugural surgical procedure was performed at doctors, as we said, by the Hair Life Clinic NASA's consulting ENT surgeon, Dr. Brian McKinnon, assisted by Dr. Robert Ramsing, local ENT surgeon. A cochlear implant system helps to restore the sense of hearing for people with severe to profound sensorineural hearing loss. For children and adults with this type of hearing loss, hearing aids provide little or no benefit. A cochlear is the only medical device capable of replacing one of these senses. It works by bypassing non-functioning parts of the inner ear and providing electrical stimulation directly to nerve fibers in the cochlea. A cochlear implant system consists of two parts, an externally worn audio processor which sits comfortably behind or off the ear, and an internal cochlear implant which is surgically placed just under the skin. Dr. McKinnon, who practices and teaches in Tennessee, grew up in a hearing impaired family and knows firsthand the challenges profound hearing loss can pose to the individual as well as his or her family. That surgery, he explains, restores the quality of life and function to the benefits of the patients, the family, and the society. This technology takes one of the most daunting problems, an inner ear that no longer works, and helps us give a very effective solution for that whether you're a child or an adult. Um, pediatric implants uh, have done wonders for those deaf children because they now can achieve similar educational and employment opportunities as a normal hearing peer when they're implanted in that first 9 to 12 months of life. You can take somebody who can't be employed because of their hearing loss and now they can be employed because the cochlear implant allows them to function in the workplace. Wesley's implant was activated a month after the surgery, and since then he's been undergoing rigorous therapy, and Dr. Shriven and speech and language pathologist Sharon Clark are helping him learn to communicate and adapt to life using a, an implant. They say this kind of surgery can be major for the Bahamas. This also can add to our medical tourism value. Uh, persons could would be more inclined, I guess, to come to the Bahamas for standardized medical care in a tried and proven destination. And of course, we know how to treat the customer right. Well, this first surgery was done as pro bono uh, at Doctors Hospital, the Hair Life Clinic, Medel, Dr. Brian McKinnon, Dr. Robert Ramsing, Dr. Cy Pierre, and Dr. Kim Scriven donated their time and expertise to make that happen. For Dr. Scriven, she sees firsthand the struggles so many patients experience due to pr profound hearing loss and the ability to provide cochlear implant surgery at Doctors Hospital is significant in her opinion. Stay with us when MB12 returns how being in the Bahamas is making one cancer patient happier for the holidays.